Curlian photography is a collection of photographic techniques used to capture the phenomenon of electrical coronal discharges. It is named after Simeon Curlian, who in 1939 accidentally discovered that if an object on a photographic plate is connected to a high voltage source, an image is produced on the photographic plate. The technique has been variously known as electrography, electrophotography, corona discharge photography, bioelectrography, gas discharge visualization, electrophotonic imaging, and, in Russian literature, Curlianography. Curlian photography has been the subject of mainstream scientific research, parapsychology research and art. To a large extent, it has been co-opted by promoters of pseudoscience, fringe science and paranormal health claims in books, magazines, workshops, and websites. History, in 1889, Chekby Navratil coined the word electrography. Seven years later in 1896, a French experimenter, H. Baravac, created electrographs of hands and leaves. In 1898, Russian engineer Yakov Narkovic Ioko demonstrated electrography at the fifth exhibition of the Russian Technical Society. In 1939, two Czechs, S. Pratt and J. Schlemmer published photographs showing a glow around leaves. The same year, Russian electrical engineer Simeon Kurlian and his wife Valentina developed Kurlian photography after observing a patient in Krasnodar Hospital who was receiving medical treatment from a high-frequency electrical generator. They had noticed that when the electrodes were brought near the patient's skin, there was a glow similar to that of a neon discharge tube. The Curlians conducted experiments in which photographic film was placed on top of a conducting plate, and another conductor was attached to the A hand, a leaf or other plant material. The conductors were energized by a high-frequency high-voltage power source, producing photographic images typically showing a silhouette of the object surrounded by an aura of light. In 1958, the Curlians reported the results of their experiments for the first time. Their work was virtually unknown until 1970, when two Americans, Lynn Schroeder and Sheila Ostrander published a book, Psychic Discoveries Behind the Iron Curtain. High-voltage electrophotography soon became known to the general public as Curlian photography. Although little interest was generated among Western scientists, Russians held a conference on the subject in 1972, at Kazakh State University. Curlian photography was used in the former Eastern Bloc in the 1970s. The corona discharge glow at the surface of an object subjected to a high-voltage electrical field was referred to as a Curlian aura in Russia and Eastern Europe. In 1975 Belarusian scientist Viktor Adamenko wrote a dissertation titled Research of the Structure of High-Frequency Electric Discharge Images. Scientific study of what the researchers called the Curlian effect was conducted by Viktor Inyushin at Kazakh State University. Early in the 1970s, Thelma Moss and Kendall Johnson of the Center for Health Sciences at the UCLA conducted extensive research into Curlian photography. Moss led an independent and unsupported parapsychology laboratory that was shut down by the university in 1979. Overview Curlian photography is a technique for creating contact print photographs using high voltage. The process entails placing sheet photographic film on top of a metal discharge plate. The object to be photographed is then placed directly on top of the film. High voltage is momentarily applied to the metal plate, thus creating an exposure. The corona discharge between the object and the high voltage plate is captured by the film. The developed film results in a Curlian photograph of the object. Color photographic film is calibrated to faithfully produce colors when exposed to normal light. Corona discharges can interact with minute variations in the different layers of dye used in the film, resulting in a wide variety of colors depending on the local intensity of the discharge. Film and digital imaging techniques also record light produced by photons emitted during corona discharge. Photographs of inanimate objects such as a coins, keys and leaves can be made more effectively by grounding the object to the earth, a cold water pipe or to the opposite side of a high voltage source. Grounding the object creates a stronger corona discharge. Curlian photography does not require the use of a camera or a lens because it is a contact print process. It is possible to use a transparent electrode in place of the high voltage discharge plate, 
allowing one to capture the resulting corona discharge with a standard camera or a video camera. Visual artists such as Robert Buelterman, Ted Hebert, and Dick Lane have used Curlian photography to produce artistic images of a variety of subjects. Curlian photographer Mark D. Roberts, who has worked with Curlian imagery for over 40 years, published a portfolio of plant images entitled Vita Occulta Plentrum, or The Secret Life of Plants, first exhibited in 2012 at the Bakken Museum in Minneapolis. Research Curlian photography has been a subject of scientific research, parapsychology research and pseudoscientific claims. Much of the research conducted around the middle of the 20th century occurred in the former Eastern Bloc before the Cold War ended and has not held up to the scrutiny of stricter Western scientific standards. Scientific research, results of scientific experiments published in 1976 involving Curlian photography of living tissue showed that most of the variations in corona discharge stream are length, density, curvature and color can be accounted for by the moisture contents on the surface of and within the living tissue. Scientists outside of the U.S. have also conducted scientific research. Konstantin Karotkov developed a technique similar to Curlian photography called gas discharge visualization. Karotkov's GDV camera system consists of hardware and software to directly record, process and interpret GDV images with a computer. The website of Karotkov promotes his device and research in a medical context. Izabela Szyszylska at the Institute of Architecture of Textiles in Poland used Karotkov's GDV camera to evaluate the effects of human contact with various textiles on biological factors such as heart rate and blood pressure, as well as corona discharge images. The experiments captured corona discharge images of subjects' fingertips while the subjects wore sleeves of various natural and synthetic materials on their forearms. The results failed to establish a relationship between human contact with the textiles and the corona discharge images, and were considered inconclusive. Parapsychology research, around the 1970s, interest in paranormal research peaked. In 1968, Dr. Thelma Moss a psychology professor headed UCLA's Neuropsychiatric Institute, which was later renamed the Semmel Institute. The NPI had a laboratory dedicated to parapsychology research and staffed mostly with volunteers. The lab was unfunded, unsanctioned and eventually shut down by the university. Toward the end of her tenure at UCLA, Moss became interested in Curlian photography, a technique that supposedly measured the auras of a living being. According to Kerry Gaynor, one of her former research assistants, many felt Curlian photography's effects were just a natural occurrence. Claims, Curlian believed that images created by Curlian photography might depict a conjectural energy field, or aura, thought, by some, to surround living things. Curlian and his wife were convinced that their images showed a life force or energy field that reflected the physical and emotional states of their living subjects. They thought these images could be used to diagnose illnesses. In 1961, they published their first paper on the subject in the Russian Journal of Scientific and Applied Photography. Curlian's claims were embraced by energy treatments practitioners. Torn leaf experiment, a typical demonstration used as evidence for the existence of these energy fields involved taking Curlian photographs of a picked leaf at set intervals. The gradual withering of the leaf was thought to correspond with a decline in the strength of the aura. In some experiments, if a section of a leaf was torn away after the first photograph, a faint image of the missing section would sometimes remain when a second photograph was taken. If the imaging surface is cleaned of contaminants and residual moisture before the second image is taken, then no image of the missing section will appear. The living aura theory is at least partially repudiated by demonstrating that leaf moisture content has a pronounced effect on the electric discharge coronas. More moisture creates larger, more dynamic corona discharges. As the leaf dehydrates, the coronas will naturally decrease in variability and intensity. As a result, the changing water content of the leaf can affect the so-called Curlian aura. Curlian's experiments did not provide evidence for an energy field other than the electric fields produced by chemical processes, and the streaming process of coronal discharges. 
the coronal discharges identified as curly and auras are the result of stochastic electric ionization processes, and are greatly affected by many factors, including the voltage and frequency of the stimulus, the pressure with which a person or object touches the imaging surface, the local humidity around the object being imaged, how well grounded the person or object is, and other local factors affecting the conductivity of the person or object being imaged. Oils, sweat, bacteria, and other ionizing contaminants found on living tissues can also affect the resulting images. Key scientists such as Beverly Rubick have explored the idea of a human biofield using curly and photography research, attempting to explain the Chinese discipline of Qigong. Qigong teaches that there is a vitalistic energy called Qi that permeates all living things. The idea of Qi as its own sort of field, not simply a creature's electromagnetic field, has been mostly disregarded by the scientific community. Rubik's experiments relied on Konstantin Karotkov's GDV device to produce images which were thought to visualize these key biofields in chronically ill patients. Rubik acknowledges that the small sample size in her experiments was too small to permit a meaningful statistical analysis. Claims that these energies can be captured by special photographic equipment are criticized by skeptics. In popular culture, Kirlian photography has appeared as a fictional element in numerous books, films, television series, and media productions. Kirlian photographs have been used as visual components in various media, such as the sleeve of George Harrison's 1973 album Living in the Material World which features Kirlian photographs of his hand holding a Hindi medallion on the front sleeve and American coins on the back, shot at Thelma Moss's UCLA Parapsychology Laboratory. See also, Timeline of Russian Innovation, Bioelectromagnetism, L Field, Magnetic Particle Inspection, Walter Kilner, List of Topics Characterized as Pseudoscience, Notes. References. Further reading, Becker, Robert and Selden, Gary, The Body Electric, Electromagnetism and the Foundation of Life, Kpner, S. and Rubin, D. Galaxies of Life, Ostrander, S. and Schroeder, L. Discoveries Behind the Iron Curtain, Iovin, John Curley and Photography, A Hands-On Guide, External Links, Curley and Photography and the Aura, Dr. Rory Coker, Professor of Physics at the University of Texas at Austin, Bioenergetic Fields, Victor J. Stinger, University of Hawaii at Manua Drive Ignatov's Methodic for Color Coronal Spectral Analysis, Sofia, Bulgaria, Curley and Effect in the Study of the Properties of Water, Oleg Masin, Doctor in Chemistry